You are now tuned in to Peach State TV, where any gym is home. www.peachstatehoops.com. Enjoy the show. And we're back with another edition of Inside the Jump Off Plus.com Today Show. My man Kyle Moore, director of scouting. I'm Brandon Clay. Thanks for tuning in. It's, even though it's the off season, so to speak, man, it's a great time for women's basketball right now. All the colleges are back in gear, have people doing the individuals. We'll actually start looking at our college rankings here in the next month. I was taking a look at last year's stuff as we close that out and make the transition into a new year, a new school year. Great time also as the weather begins to change here in Atlanta. The WNBA Finals will be here next week. Games 1 and 2 out in Seattle. Games 3 and possibly 4 if need be here in Atlanta. Game 5 back out there if they get that far. Talk to us a little about your thoughts with the Finals themselves. Obviously Seattle's loaded. Super. Lauren Jackson just won the MVP last week. Brian Agler, who actually paid us a visit last year at one of our events with his daughter Taylor, just won Coach of the Year. But Atlanta's done a great job of their own, being able to win the Eastern Conference Finals, and we were there for Game 2. So talk to us a little bit about that. I think so much of what this series is going to ultimately come down to is going to be about matchups. You know, Atlanta right now at this point in, uh, in their season has decided to go with some more athleticism out on the court. So in some ways, even though they've got some size with it, McCarthy being 6'1", and the Souza being as long as she is, yeah. you know, they still at this point kind of have four guards out uh, and, and create some matchup problems for some teams. You saw New York struggle with that in that uh, Eastern Conference Finals series where you know, they were so accustomed to having, even though McCarver was out, you know, they still had those post players they were trying to go to around Cappy Pondexter. And so, you know, some of the quickness that Atlanta put out, especially at that forward and that three yeah. position, was tough for him. So. Agreed. Well, do you think that, you know, coming right off of that, do you think that Atlanta will be able to have the same success? They really made it tough on New York. You talk about McWilliams, Franklin, also Planette Pearson, uh, Kia Vaughn, you know, some bigger posts, maybe who aren't as agile. Atlanta was able to take advantage of some matchups by starting Armenti Price, Miller, McCautry, and Castro Marquez together with Little in the middle, and then bringing D'Souza off the bench. Well, now you look at Seattle, who's got Jackson, They've got Camille Little, who is a smaller four, you know, a longer, lean version, who almost kind of cancels out maybe that or negates, you know, that second post, so to speak, the advantage Atlanta got. Do you think that Atlanta will be able to use that? Because obviously, you know, Coach Meadows made a great adjustment. They got two good wins right away, you know, got a little bit of rest. Same thing Seattle was able to do, knocking out Phoenix quick. Can Atlanta do that again in this series, or are they going to have to come maybe back to the more traditional approach where they start both Little and D'Souza together to try to give them an advantage in that direction? Well, it'll be interesting to see. I think the big thing with that is going to be that four position where Angel McCautry is going to probably have to match up with Camille Little. Um, you know, what, what, with what Lauren Jackson brings to the table with that high-low, you can bring Lauren Jackson out to 19, 20 feet away from the basket, and she's still a threat to score. So now you talk about Angel McCarthy sure. having a battle in the post where there's going to probably be a seal in that high-low sure. position, and there's really no place else to double because you can't double off of Jackson. Yeah. Bird will kill you. Yep. Um, so that that's going to be the question. Who wins that matchup? You know, Is McCarthy yeah. giving it to Little so much on the other end where you're, you're if you're Atlanta, you're just able to say, you know, we're going to have to work with that because sure. that's the, the way we want to play. Or does McCarthy have to move down to that three position and you have to bring the Souza or yeah. Bales off of the bench and, and give them some more sure. time? I think one of the things that, you know, obviously Coach Meadows has to look at is, you know, first of all, Seattle's just a very different team makeup-wise. But two, I think that you put McCarthy in that kind of situation where she's isolated on the post against somebody like Camille Little. Now she's a, a whistle or two away from being in trouble. You know, they were able to kind of stave that off in the, the first game with the Liberty where she got in foul trouble late and and they had to sit her for the last couple of minutes. Unfortunately for them, the Liberty weren't able to take advantage of Mokashi on the bench inside of three and a half minutes. I don't know if they'll be that fortunate in a closed game with Seattle. So, I mean, I, I would venture to say that, you know, given what, what we've seen and what we know, they might have to go in a different direction, especially when you talk about Tanisha Wright, Swin Cash out on the perimeter, a Brosom over coming off the bench, Lacole Willingham, who's a, a monster inside, undersized. I mean, Seattle's got a lot of different weapons, whereas New York, especially minus McCarvel, really was kind of short in terms of options that could score and get them baskets and create some of those mismatch situations for them. And Atlanta was able to capitalize on that, man. Well, who's going to win the series? I'm going to take the underdog here. I'm looking for McCarthy to give me some, some 30 and 40 point nights. Okay. You know, if you've been following our, our PHA TV webisodes, I'm a big McCarthy fan. <laughs> 
So uh, I'm gonna say I'm taking Atlanta in four. That's good stuff. The guy with the Seattle Storm colors on his shirt goes with the Atlanta Dream. Well, I think uh, you know, just in in all fairness, somebody should pick Seattle. But I live here, and I don't want the dream out of me, so I'm going with the dream too. <laughs> All right, moving on, we're going to talk a little bit about some high school recruiting. We just released our 2012 updated rankings earlier this morning. Um, Mariah Jefferson moves to number one on the heels of a flight tomorrow morning in which she'll be headed to stores UConn to visit. Had a chance to speak with her mother earlier today. They'll actually be getting out of there. Jefferson actually takes classes at the local community college already. Yeah, I said local community college. She's only a junior. She's still got two years left but has been homeschooled and done a great job and been able to advance herself in some of those courses. So looking to get a lot of college credits out of the way before she ever steps foot on whatever campus it is she decides to go to and the list is long and, and she still isn't anywhere close to making that final decision. Uh, talk to us a little about Jefferson, you know, why you thought we should move her to one. Obviously, I was in agreement, um, you know, obviously not through any fault. Maybe some of the other players, Stewart, Stafford, those kids, but just Jefferson had that great summer. Touch base on that for us. Um, I think, especially coming out of USA Basketball, and, and you know, unfortunately for her, she wasn't able to make that team. But with her her attitude and the way she kind of just ripped through the summer, it was consistent play. You know, I, I when I saw her play in Chicago, consistently giving effort, consistently pressuring other point guards. Um, you know, the full length of the court. It seemed every time she played, she wanted to prove that not only was she the best point guard in the country, but she was the best player in the country. And, you know, you heard about what she did. I wasn't there to see what she did in New Orleans, but you heard about what she did in New Orleans, about, you know, some of the things with, with her going at it with Alexis Jones and different things like that, with both of them playing well down there. Um, and then you get to Nike Nationals, which is the biggest stage, so to speak, of the summer. And, you know, she puts DFW on her back. She had a, a great game with North Tartan where her and Rachel Bottom went back and forth. She got the best of her there. Um, picked up some foul trouble in the first half of the Tennessee flight game and had to sit. And, you know, with that game coming down to literally a possession, you know, the, the Tennessee flight got some free throws to send it to two possessions, but it was a possession game. And with that game coming down to a possession and Jefferson being on the bench for 10 minutes and the number one player in the 2011 class on the other team, it just became too much for DFW to overcome. But, you know, everybody that was there that day would have loved to have seen Jefferson play the full amount of time as Lewis was able to. Sure. Well, and I think you, you touched on it there. And one of the things we want to make sure we reiterate, both on Stafford's end and Stewart's end, it's not that you know, they were gone across the water. We've seen them enough. And, you know, Kyle even saw, you know, Stewart there again at the tail end at Nike Nationals. You know, great players in their own right. But, you know, we try to view it as a draft. You know, if we were starting a franchise today, you know, who are we taking number one? And whether it was Cincinnati, whether it was Colorado Springs, whether it was Augusta, whether it was Chicago, every time we saw her, when the lights were on, you know, it just she was just captivating with her performance. You know, I think everybody else obviously was solid, no days off, you know, great, great workmanlike performances, but she really stole the show this summer. So no, it's like I said, looking at that 2012 class, very good class. The class has continued to get deeper. As time has gone on, you look at some of the kids in that class, you know, even in Nicole Cornette, who kind of emerged this summer. Um, we also talked about Bria Holmes, who I think is a 28 for us. So when you're talking about kids, you know, into the 30s, into the 40s, Jordan Jones from Texas, who we mentioned a couple episodes ago, Cat Quick, Quick Point Guard, Khadijah Sessions, um, you know, just tons of talent all the way through, you know, that top 50 range. Moving on, last thing. You know, back to the WNBA, kind of in theory, we got word that Candace Parker's had surgery on a torn meniscus. Um, you know, it's her third, you know, physical ailment of some sort. Obviously, she was pregnant, you know, had her child, uh, had shoulder surgery here during the season, you know, and now is going in to have the meniscus. What do you think that that's done, you know, just to her vibe as a player? Obviously, she was just, you know, if not the best player in the world, one of the top two or three coming out of Tennessee, and now hadn't really been able to get the momentum rolling. You know, obviously some campaigns and some marketing things have, have gone on and unfortunately hadn't gotten his steam rolling. What, what's your take on the situation? Well, the big thing with, with Candace Parker at this point is just making sure she gets back healthy. Yep. And at some point, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later, but whenever she can, just making sure that she can come back to the form that she was and be the player that she was. And, and at some point, when we looked at it four or five years ago, we thought that she was going to be the future of yeah. the sport. So, you know, we've got to believe on some level that she, and especially along with Maya coming coming out next year, can really give the, the sport another burst, the sport another burst, especially with the WNBA playoffs wrapping up as well as they have. Um, 
you know, you got to look at it next year where her and Maya are both rookies, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Kane is having that great first year, but yeah. haven't really come in behind it with yeah. anything. Um, it would be great, especially with the, the Sparks struggling and Maya yeah. probably going to a team that's, that's going to have struggled this past season. It would be great for the league, as <laughs> top-heavy as it was this, yep. this year, to put two players, probably two of the best five players in the league, on rosters. Um, that, that were struggling last year and just really have some parity yeah. and some balance. I, I'd agree with that completely, especially when you look once again at Miami. You know, numbers-wise, probably going Tulsa, Minnesota, Chicago, one of those three. Um, like you said, Candace being back after Lisa Leslie retiring. Tough year out there in L.A., even with the coaching change, Michael Cooper moving on to USC. Um, touching that base, it'll be interesting to see how New York does next year with Ann Diamond moving on to Seton Hall. I actually talked to one of her assistants, Ty Grayson, you know, obviously it was bittersweet. You know, they would love to have seen her, you know, continue even though that, you know, they're getting ready and getting individuals started. You know, you want the people that you're working with and working for to continue to succeed. So, no, I think that's a great point there on on Parker. We'll look forward to, to watching hopefully her come back. It's almost reminiscent of, you know, Grant Hill. You know, not the length of time, but in terms of, you know, a star being born, so to speak, the way that, that Grant in the, the late 90s had kind of gotten his career off and running. You know, and then before you know it, you blink, and, and he still is a, a great player, but not nearly what it should have been in terms of the length or the duration of his career. So, now as always, thanks for tuning in. We were glad to be here. Can't wait to get back with you again. Here's the WNBA Finals get kicked off this weekend in each of his home.